Hi everyone, my name is Archie, and my story is about my parents. I'm sure many of you listening to me right now have many reasons to hold grudges against your ancestors. If I'm right, put a plus sign here in the comments. I won't judge you, and I hope you won't either. Generally, the topic with parents lives on forever, because the day comes when you feel like you are not understood, not appreciated or loved in principle. That's where the question comes up, why was I born at all? My parents farmed. They worked for some very rich farmers and took care of their livestock. There were a lot of sheep and goats. Those animals were so capricious. You had to trim them all the time, then feed them, then vaccinate them. My ancestors and I lived in a small house, not far from the owners. My parents woke up bright and early and went to feed the farm. I don't even know how much they were paid there and whether they were paid at all because whenever I asked them to buy something for me, mum and dad said we had no money for it. And then I went to school and my needs grew with me because I had friends and more mature needs and interests. I tried to ask to go to birthday parties or just hang out with some of the guys, but they wouldn't let me. I either helped my parents at work or stayed home and studied. That was my life. One day I got so mad that they kept me like those goats, locked up, fed them, and sometimes reminded of lessons, that I deliberately opened the stable and two sheep escaped. Dad had managed to catch the rest. I didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to annoy them, make them as unpleasant as they were to me. Yes, my parents were told off by the sheep owners. After this incident, my parents decided to leave town under the pretext of making money. But they left me in our house because I had a school here and the owners could look after me. I didn't want to let them go, but I had no choice. Mum and Dad left after a month, leaving me here alone. And it was awful. Yeah, to be left alone to fend for myself. So what? Basically, they left me with people who weren't even related to us. I was also a minor, so that's leaving a child in danger. Yes, my mother called me every day, asking how I was doing, what I was eating, what I wasn't eating and all that. But it wasn't getting any easier. I came to the conclusion that my parents had abandoned me. I couldn't forgive that kind of betrayal. And then it just went back to the way it was. I started answering their calls less often, and then I stopped picking up the phone altogether. I also fell off at school and skipped classes more often. Sometimes the bosses would go into custody mode, but it ended sadly. Archie, what a mess your house is. Will you clear it up? This yogurt has been on the table for a month. It's rotten. Do you like that stench? Yeah, it's fine. It doesn't bother me. Well, it's not my business. It's not my house. And I'm not your kid either, so you don't have to try and be a caring parent. Well, whatever. I just wanted you to see. Your mum called. She's worried and asked me. Tell her I'm doing great. Maybe don't come over. She's worried. Can't you at least answer the message? None of your business, and I'm not your kid. Got it? Okay, I'll tell her that. Close the door behind you. It stressed me out that he was trying to control me. At the time, my own folks left me alone. I lived like that for several years, got into all kinds of horrible situations, and the first one was my trouble with the law. I stole someone else's car, or more accurately, my acquaintance's father's car. I just wanted to go for a drive, but I didn't know how to steal, so I got behind the wheel and headed for the nearest pole. My close acquaintance with whom I had become good friends handled the situation. No one found out about the incident, but then this acquaintance demanded a refund and dragged me into an adventure with the sale of stolen goods. It was later I found out that they were stolen. Problems became even more. He got me out again and then dragged me back in again. So it went around and around. I was working for him and working off my own freedom. At that point, I didn't realize that he was just using me, twisting me around, and I thought he was my best friend. But it all comes to an end. I went downhill. I tried alcohol and got addicted. I ended up back in juvie because I beat up my girlfriend. Yeah, I even managed to have a relationship, you know? Her name was Holly Skin. Terrific girl. Too bad I didn't get to appreciate her because I blew it. All this time, I continued to hold a grudge against my parents. I left my home. I was disgusted that everything there reminded me of my father and my mother. They began to call less and less often, and I realized that they already had another life. Yeah, it hurt. So I packed my bags and took off without telling the owners. And life from that moment on was like a paddling merry-go-round, filled with problems and worries. Only it didn't stop. Not for a second, I could not breathe. 
And the final touch was an incident that nearly made me lose my mind. I woke up from the cold and terrible pain in my stomach. I spent the night at an old train station, found myself a secluded corner and made myself a little cozy. I felt so bad that I didn't move. I thought it was all because of the cheap booze I drank the night before. Some stranger came up to me and asked what he could do to help. I asked him to call an ambulance, but then instead of his face, I saw my father's face. I got hysterical, screaming for him to back off, but I would never forgive him and didn't want to see him. And then I jumped on the man and punched him in the jaw. Of course, passers-by called the cops again. But I managed to escape and get away quickly, now that I knew how to do it. After an hour, it was safe to get out of hiding, but as soon as I got out, I was shocked. There were passers-by everywhere with the faces of my mum and my dad. I began to hallucinate. I began to lunge at each of them, trying to hit my father and to grab my mother's hand. Everyone was running away from me, barely having time to escape. Someone punched me and I fell down. I began to cry very bitterly. For the first time in two years. I think it was only then that I realized that my parents hadn't been around for so long. Then my father came over again and started shaking me. Son, son, get up, it's dad. Then mum came over and I lost consciousness. I woke up in the hospital and my parents were really next to me. I was both happy for them and not. At first I didn't want to talk and then I asked them why they were there. It was like they ditched me. Nobody left you. Of course, you disappeared for two years. I almost died during that time. You didn't pick up the phone. You didn't answer the phone. Because you've given up on me. You could have just once sent me some money. How do you mean we sent you money every month? I didn't get anything. Oh, he's a bastard. I'll sue him. What are you talking about? Oh my God, the owners of those sheep. We sent it to his name. He was supposed to give everything to you. Okay, we'll deal with that. What did you think? We left you? I told what I remembered, and Dad and Mum just freaked out. They said they didn't pack up and leave as I remembered, but that they had to pay the dues because of the sheep I let out. And the scene of Dad and me standing right after what happened and him scolding me came to mind. What did you do? Do you realize what you've done? I think I overdid it. Too much? That's an understatement. Do you have any idea how much each one is worth? No. Your mother and I will now have to work off our debt for several months. Just pay it back with the money you've saved. What savings? You have the money, right? You're not buying anything. You don't buy anything I ask for. You don't buy anything for yourself either. But you get paid, right? This means you must have money saved up. It's been a long time since you got your belt. What the hell? For counting shit? Do you think clothes, food, your education is worthless? And the house bills plus your future college? College? Did you raise money for me to go to college? Yes, but since you're so smart, we'll give the money for those lost sheep. Thank you, son. You did us a favor. No, I'm sorry. I overdid it. I mean, is that what it was? We were raising money for you to go to college. We wanted to make a quick buck and then pick you up and go someplace else. I didn't say anything. I just covered my hand and cried. All these years, I had lived with the certainty that I wasn't needed. As it turned out, none of it was true. And the landlord did his best, of course. Anyway, we went back to our house and then dad shook every dime off that man. We paid him back and got out of that town where I almost ruined my life. My name is Anna. I am 14 years old and not so long ago, my family and I moved to a very unusual place. Have you ever heard anything about Chernobyl? In short, this is a city in the Ukraine, and it is famous for its accident that occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant 34 years ago. As a result of the disaster, there was a huge, powerful release of radioactive substances, and the city was recognized as dangerous. Many people had to be evacuated from there. Dad said that people thought that all this was temporary, and soon they would go back to their homes, which had to be abandoned as a matter of urgency, as well as their belongings, but unfortunately, no one ever returned. And now, more than 30 years have passed, and my fanatical geologist father was still working on some project that he never told my mother and me about. One day, he came home from work and told my mother and I to pack our things. To our questioning look, he only replied that we are moving to Chernobyl. I didn't want this, and neither did my mother, but we both didn't dare say something in spite of my father. 
because he was a very strict man. Personally, I was always afraid of him. I don't know about my mother. I loved our little house because that's where I was born and raised. I had friends at school and on the street. I liked to go to school, come home after school, eat something delicious, and run outside. I usually did my homework with my mother in the evenings. We hardly saw my father because he was always busy at work. Well, my mother and I were fine with that. When he was at home, we felt tense. I was even afraid to leave the room. In general, my dad is not bad, just did not communicate much with us, and often scolded me or did not pay any attention to me at all. That is why, when he said we were moving, my mother and I kept our indignation and protests to ourselves. Mom silently got up and went to pack her things, and I went to get mine. We left the next morning and took few suitcases with us. We arrived at the place in three to four days, and it was a terrible road. My father was silent all the way, and my mother and I didn't really talk. We were allowed in with special passes. When we arrived at the place, a sad picture opened up in front of me. In this city, in my city, there were much fewer people. Yes, people still lived there, and there are even working shops, but most of the territory is empty. The houses are very old and ugly. Many of the courtyards have long been overgrown with grass. I was afraid to enter the city. What if we get infected with radiation there? And then what happens? Will I start glowing at night? Or what if I grow a third hand? But my father said it was important to his work, so it wasn't discussed. We were given an apartment in an even more depressing area, where there were no children, no playgrounds, not really anything at all. We went to the apartment and nothing seemed to have changed since the accident. I wanted to cry. My mother and I were left to clean up and sort things out, and my father said it was necessary for him to leave, without even saying where. We scrubbed the apartment for about four or five hours. All this time, my mother asked me how I was feeling. She was worried about me, but I didn't want to upset her, so I said that everything was fine. In the evening, after dinner, my mother and I decided to take a walk around the area. When we went outside, we saw two people. They were also going somewhere. They looked at us and passed us, guns in their hands. It's probably normal to go armed here. After walking around the courtyard, we found a lot of interesting toys and even equipment on the ground. I really wanted to touch something or take it for myself, but my mother wouldn't let me. I asked what would happen to us now, but she said she hoped for the best. Then I saw the children's slides and I wanted a ride. I sat down and went down. I was having fun. The third time, I suddenly heard a terrible roar, and a dog was running at me. She barked and growled horribly, looked at me, and foamed at the mouth. I was going down the hill right into her mouth, and I couldn't slow down. At that moment, my mother rushed towards us, but she was too far away. I already thought I'd lose my head. Suddenly, there was a shot in the air. When I opened my eyes, I saw that the dog was lying dead, and not far away were those men with guns who passed us. This isn't an amusement park. We advise you not to leave the house, but rather to go far away and forever. They told us. My mother grabbed my arm. I thanked them and we ran home. In the evening, my mother began to cry, saying that we would not live like this for long. When my father came home, she first raised the question of whether to leave. Dad didn't like it. He got so tense right away, and I jumped in. I told him that I was almost eaten by a dog, so my father stopped talking and then told us to keep our heads down and go to bed. At this point, I realized that this is for a long time, so I decided to adapt and find ways to survive here. First of all, my mother and I sealed up all the windows, hung a cloth behind them so that no one could see anything, and put tools for self-defense at the entrance because stray dogs sometimes broke into apartments. Dad said we won't be here for long, but we'll have to stay for a while. A week later, 
I wanted to go to the station where the explosion took place. That day, my mother also went on business with my father. I didn't want to stay at home, especially since I lived here. Why not see the station with my own eyes? I gathered some warm clothes and went there on the map. It turns out that it was not so easy to get through, since there were security guards and some tourists. But I still managed to get as close as possible in a roundabout way. I took a few photos as a keepsake, and then I saw an interesting doll. She was so beautiful, I wanted to keep her. But security noticed me. They called to me, and I got scared and started running. They quickly caught up with me and began to take away the camera. I resisted, but they were stronger. I was taken to a building and left in an office. It was like an interrogation that I didn't know how to answer. In the end, they shook my mother's phone off of me and called her. My parents were already at home, and my mother was hysterical from not knowing where I was. Anyway, she and dad came to pick me up, and my dad was so angry. I realized that at home, I would be scolded. You will leave tomorrow, he said at home. We couldn't believe our ears. I was so happy, and Dad said it was a mistake to bring us along. He added that he thought we were interested in his work, but this was not the case. To be honest, I didn't care, so I just went and started packing. We left the next day, and Dad still stayed. All I knew was that I would never go back there again. Would you like to visit Chernobyl?